Hi, Blaze Leaders. Uh, pray that you're having a good day today. Uh, I wanted to begin this series uh, because we are all busy and uh, there's not enough time for us to meet together as a leadership team uh, the way that I really want to. Uh, we do need to have another meeting uh, now that I'm thinking about it, but um, I would really love to just be able to uh, invest into you guys and kind of share some of the leadership wisdom that has been shared with me through the years. Uh, and uh, I'd like to do that through this uh, series. I'm able to just shoot these in my office and uh, upload them to YouTube. And then uh, I'm able to email the link out to you guys and you can watch them at your convenience. And so uh, my heart uh, for the next few, um, I guess, segments uh, of this series is uh, to invest into you. And I'm going to be using uh, a book called Developing the Leader Within You by John Maxwell. Uh, John Maxwell is a leadership guru. Uh, he's been doing leadership for years and he has really great stuff um, concerning leadership. And uh, so I'm going to be uh, gleaning from his book and, and kind of highlighting the points and sharing those with you. Uh, my first pastor, ever that I worked for, uh, he bought me this book along with the workbook and him and I would meet every week on Tuesdays after staff meeting. Uh, him and I would meet uh, just, you know, the two of us and we would go through the book together. And what that did for my life, uh, somebody purposely sitting down and investing in me as a leader, um, it was huge in my life. He was always asking me the question, what is next? For Kevin Dobbs, you know, he knew I wasn't going to be at that church forever doing what I was doing there forever. He knew that one day I would move on. So he was always, always asking the question, what's next for Kevin Dobbs? And he was always investing into me. Whenever he saw a good book, he would buy two copies, one for himself and one for me. So I really greatly appreciate that. So my heart behind this is that you would uh, come to really appreciate uh, this time. And, um, and, and prayerfully, uh, we will all grow together. Um, now, I'd love for us to go to some events coming down the road here as a team. We're going to do that. Um, but for now, this is real easy. You can watch it at your convenience. And um, hopefully, again, it will be a good investment for you. So developing the leader within you, uh, the book, the whole premise of the book is exactly what it says. Uh, the objective is to develop the leader inside of you. Every single one of you is a leader. Now, you might not be a leader uh, of 100 employees at your job. You might not be a leader of one employee, but all of you are leaders within at least your household, your home. Uh, and here at the church, uh, at, at uh, FBC, you are leaders. So you have to understand that you are a leader. A lot of people like to shy away from uh, whenever a person identifies them as a leader, he or she's a leader. And they're like, no, I'm not a leader. And, you know, they're super humble and they just kind of, oh, well, you know, I just do what I do. And, but the reality is, is that everybody is a leader and, uh, you are one because the, the uh, core definition of leadership is influence. If you influence somebody, then you lead that person in a certain direction, in a certain capacity, in a certain way. And all of us influence people. Now, uh, the reality is, is that you influence more people than what you really believe. And so um, as we're looking at what is leadership in this very beginning here, uh, well, really, it's influence. And I think that you can back that up with the question uh, that I would challenge you to ask yourself, how many people do you influence? The reality is, is that you probably can't count. Uh, sure, you can count people in your house, people at, at work, people at church, you know, maybe people that you hang out with, uh, and, you know, just kind of a, uh, a best buddy kind of a deal, uh, maybe close uh, loved ones, r r relatives, you may influence them, but the reality is, is that they influence other people as well. And so it becomes this trickle, uh, in, in essence, where your influence goes on to influence others. So you can never underestimate exactly how many people uh, that you do influence. So as we're looking at uh, this whole idea of being a leader, uh, there are a few stages of leadership. 
levels, if you will. All right, and um, I'd like us to go through those levels quickly uh, during this time here, and then we'll wrap up. All right, now the next time we will concentrate on priorities as a leader. But I want you to understand what the levels of leadership are, and I want you to be able to identify where you are uh, in terms of uh, which level that you fall. The first level is position. All right, the first level is position. Now, this is a very basic introductory level of leadership, and I'll give you a, a real, um, a real easy example. All right, the easy example is what happened with this position that that I came into, the youth pastor here at church. All right, I came in as a youth pastor, and Pastor Scott introduced me as a youth pastor, and so right away, I had position as the new youth leader, and so I had influence and authority just because of my position over people uh, now some people may like that some people may not like that but that's the reality the reality is is that whenever you step into a position if that is a uh, leadership position then you are the leader and so automatically you have influence you have authority you come into that position you may be the new guy you may be the old guy or gal uh, but you, you, you influence people right from the get-go, and people have to listen to what you say because you're the leader. Uh, again, you might not like it, you might not agree with it, but because I am the youth pastor, automatically, day one, I had authority, I had certain influence, I had certain command, and it's the same with you. You might get a raise at a job, or you might see somebody raised to a position, and automatically, day one, you're introduced to them. Hey, I want you to meet, you know, the new executive or the new president or whatever. And, and, and once that person is introduced, they become the leader. And the position means that they lead people. Now, again, this is a base introductory level. So it doesn't mean that people respect you. It doesn't mean that people respect me. Uh, they, certain people have to listen to me because I'm the leader, but it doesn't mean they respect me. So this is the very introductory uh, level, if you will. We don't want to remain here. We don't want to stay here. But it is the very base uh, of, of this whole thing that is leadership. Okay, Introductory is position. Now, number two is, is, uh, is, is uh, permission. Number two is permission. So at this point in time, we've gone from uh, where I am simply the youth pastor. That's my position. And everybody you know, within the youth department, they uh, listen to me. They take instructions from me because of the position I hold. Now we've gone from position to uh, the next step, which is permission. So what happens at permission is uh, this is where you get people to work under you, to follow you uh, because they want to. They're not obligated, but they are giving their permission to you that, that, you, know, that you can now be a person who leads them. So for example, for me, all right. Uh, my my heart is that uh, I would climb up the steps of leadership here at the church. So, example for you, my heart is that I would gain your permission to lead you. All right. At that point in time, when that happens, you give me permission to speak into your life. You give me permission to be a person who will lead. Uh, maybe it's your kids. Maybe you have kids in the youth group. Maybe you're going to have kids in the youth group, and so you are giving me permission to lead your kids, to have an opportunity to speak into their life. And hopefully, if you're watching this right now, hopefully you are coming to a place where you're even giving permission for me to be able to reach you through these video series. I know that I'm probably the young man on the team. Uh, I'm not you know, super old, I'm not super wise, uh, but hopefully you are granting me permission to speak into your life through uh, even this series that we're starting uh, right now. So permission is really, really huge. All right, um, you are going from a place of uh, where I have to listen to you because I'm obligated to a place where I listen to you because I give you permission and I'm going to follow you because I give you permission. And uh, so that is one that is super, super huge. All right, so uh, a, um, an illustration, a great illustration of why it's so critical to put people um, and, and their needs ahead of uh, your needs in terms of learning how to lead out of, uh, out of permission.
can be found uh, uh, from uh, Henry Ford in the Model T. All right, so let me read this to you. Uh, Henry Ford, he made a perfect car, the Model T, uh, that ended the need for any other car. He was totally product oriented. He wanted to fill the world with Model T cars. But when people started to come to him saying, Mr. Ford, we'd like a different color. He remarked, you can have any, you can have any color you want as long as it's black. And that's when the decline started. People who are unable to build solid lasting relationships will soon discover that they are unable to sustain long uh, leadership that makes a l l lasting impact. The reality is, is that uh, we need to remember that this is about work for leaders who are not people driven. They're not people, they are not a people person. He or she is not a people person. And so for them, uh, it's all about uh, productivity. It's all about the end result. It's all about the dollar bill. And they forget, um, j just like us, we are learning to lead people. All right. Uh, we are leading students. You are leading students. Maybe you are leading your household. So you're leading a spouse and students. All right. Maybe you are leading people at your job also. But we have to remember that it's about leading people. And so we want to, as long as we stay people oriented, then we're going to move up the ladder. A person who stays at a production orientation, meaning, you know, for me, uh, what that would look like for me is that, you know what, it's not about building students and building a healthy team. It's just about uh, getting as many students as possible in town and raising the biggest budget and having the coolest events. So we can do all that and I can do all that and I can do all of it without any care for individual students and what's going on in their life and the quality of their life and my team you know i can really have a perspective where you know what um, we need more kids we need a bigger budget and i'm going to use you my leaders to accomplish that so what happens is i never invest in you really i never really care for you as a person i simply use you as a means to an end which is a larger budget, biggest youth ministry, and, you know, a youth church that's blown up. We have our own building. Everybody's talking about us, you know, but all the while, you guys are burnt out. You're going on your last, last string, you know, and you don't really have this sense uh, in your heart that you are cared for and appreciated. So we keep it people-oriented, and we will move from uh, position to permission, all right, permission. Henry Ford, when he built the model Model T. He was all about productivity. Uh, he wanted everyone to have one of his cars. And so uh, it became not really about the people, but it became about the car and making sure everyone had his car and his car was the best and his product. But he was unable to bend when somebody asked him for uh, a different color car. So we want to make sure that we remember as we're leading that it's about people. All right. So that's number two permission. Three is production. Three is production. All right, now on this level, things begin to happen, good things, okay? So as, as you're leading people, as we're leading a organization, production happens. So example, uh, example, profit increases, morale is high, all right? Turnover is low, uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the goals are being met or, uh, or the needs are being met of the company or the people. Um, you're gaining momentum along the way uh, you are learning to lead and influence others and you're having a good time doing it all right uh, so this one there's a huge difference between level two and level three uh, when it comes to this on the relationship level people uh, get together just to get together there's no other objective but on the results level people come together to accomplish a purpose they like to get together but they love to get together to accomplish something so in other words, they are results oriented, all right? However, however, even though they're results oriented, they are a team and they're all heading towards the same direction and the same goal, all right? So um, for example, with this one, um, we will be a team, all right, who loves to work together here at Blaze, but we will also be a team who uh, has realized that we are producing results. So when we get to this point in time, uh, if if I'm the leader, then we've got to a place um, where we are being productive. And under my leadership, 
you are understanding that productivity is taking place. And uh, for example, if you are a leader and you are leading people at your job or at work or at your job or at home or wherever that, that you lead people, all right, maybe let's just talk about you leading students here um, uh, in, in Blaze, all right? So you have a small group of students that you lead uh, and those students are beginning to see things happen in their lives as a result of your leadership. Or right, let's say you're leading a small group or you've got a few students that you really invest in. Those students, their lives are being transformed uh, by God. Uh, they they uh, are at a place in their life where they feel loved uh, and appreciated for who they are. They feel desired when they walk in the door. They feel like Blaze and you being there is a place where they can come no matter what condition and you know they can just be welcomed and, and it's a warm, caring place and, and they're seeing things happen and then they're inviting their friends and their friends are coming and their friends' lives are being changed. And, and now we're getting some, some, some tread here. Now we're gaining some ground and see productivity that people will begin to appreciate you and respect you more as a leader when productivity comes, all right? So you move from position. I am the youth pastor, uh, kneel before me, bow before me. Then you go to permission, all right? Uh, as I'm caring for you as a person, you in turn are giving me permission to invest in your life. Then as that exchange increases and we come together as a team, all right, in the beginning, we're coming together as a team maybe because we have to, but we see results. Students' lives are being changed. More students are coming. Things are happening, all right? Then, then you move to a place of production. All right, so now as a leader, you're at the production level. You are producing results. Uh, the people under you can see those results, and so uh, they're excited about it, all right? So now they're going to follow you, not because of your title, not even because you get, you know, uh, uh, that person is giving you permission, but now they're going to follow you because uh, they, they are seeing results, all right? So now you're gaining momentum, you're gaining their respect, all right? That's level three. So level four is people development, people development, all right? Um, so uh, the question, how do you spot a leader? Well, according to Robert Townsend, they come in all sizes, ages, shapes, and conditions. Some are poor administrators, while uh, some are not overly bright. There is a clue. Since some people are mediocre, the true leader can be recognized because somehow his people consistently demonstrate superior performances. A leader is great not because of his or her power, but because of his or her ability to empower others. Th this is key. Uh, understanding this is super. Uh, my, my wife's company, they understand this very well. All right. Um, my wife's company, her CEO, um, she makes a lot of money. All right. More than anybody who's watching this video makes, I guarantee you. Uh, they, their office is in D.C. It's right by the Iwo Jima uh, Memorial right there. Uh, you can see the um, monument, you can, you, you know, the mall is right there. Uh, so, I mean, it's just, it's right there in DC. Uh, her office is beautiful. The, the, the president and CEO of the company, your office is beautiful. You just have this awesome view of DC as you look out the window. Uh, but sometimes, you know, Allie and I joke about what she really does because she's never in the office. And it's like, what does she do? She's never in the office. You can't get a hold of her. Uh, she's never there. She's always out somewhere, or whatever. And the reality is, is it, it's not our business to know what she does, but she is in a position where she delegates. See, the world understands this. The corporate world understands this. The business world understands this, where you are a, a, um, you are a great leader when you delegate when you empower others, when you turn turn things over to them and have them do it. Um, the, the, the world gets that, all right? They understand that. So uh, she makes a lot of money. Now, the reality is, is that uh, she is responsible for the company, uh, whether it succeeds, whether it crumbles, it all will come back on her. Um, so if she signs a document, she gives approval to something, and that thing goes belly up, man, everybody's coming into her office. So um, there is a huge weight of responsibility on her shoulders, but she also delegates a lot away. There are a lot of people that do a lot of things that she's given them to do. Now, when we translate that over into the church world and we talk about delegation, sometimes that upsets people. 
like they think the senior pastor should do everything. Uh, but the reality is, is that uh, when you look uh, in Scripture, you remember the um, apostles, they were serving tables and waiting in tables in the book of Acts. And they said, look, this is not, this is not good for us to be serving tables. Um, you know, this is, I mean, this is a joke. You know, we need to be dedicating ourselves to reading, to praying, and to preaching the gospel. And so they chose from among them men, other men, who could do that job. And so they delegated those responsibilities so that they could be freed up to do only what they could do, which was uh, to uh, study God's word and to preach God's word. Now here, Pastor Scott, he's the one who studies God's word, he preaches God's word, he gets direction from the church. He should not be cleaning toilets. He should not be going and doing every hospital visit. You know, he should not have to pray for every single person who walks in the door. There are other people here who can do those things. But there are times where people are like, well, wait a minute, Pastor, we pay you, right? I mean, we give our tithes to the church, we pay you. Shouldn't you be the one who's reaching my friends? Shouldn't you be the one who, who's, I mean, shouldn't you be doing these things? And, you know, I, I wonder how many people would be upset if we told them, look, uh, you're, you're tithing, all right? And part of that tithe is used to pay uh, Pastor Scott, and he is busy right now studying uh, God's word so that he can preach. And they're like, wait, he's been studying all day? Like, uh, I want a refund. Like, I mean, why isn't he out saving the world? And the reality is, is that he, he's not called to do that. The Bible tells us that we are called to equip the saints, and it's their job to do the work of the ministry. Our job is, is to equip them. And I tell you that because people development is what we are in the business of. All right. Um, I cannot do everything that has to be done in, in, in blaze. And you know that. And I'm not here to tell you that. All right. We all know that. Just like Pastor Scott can't do everything to move the church ahead. I cannot do everything for blaze. So uh, over time, I'm going to delegate things to you. Now, the great thing is, is that you might feel like you can't do all of those things or you've got one thing that you do that is your thing. And these other things, they can be given away to somebody else who could do them. So that's where our student leaders come into play. So as we develop student leaders, we are handing things off to them. And they can do it. And they develop. All right. Um, it's just like the Bible explains that disciples make disciples. All right. Christians who are healthy produce other Christians. In the same way, we who are leaders will produce other people who will lead others. All right. Uh, we who are delegators will produce other people who, who learn how to delegate. All right. So um, I want you to think about that because uh, people development is uh, is a huge one. All right. Uh, and there are some uh, more um, ideas or concepts here under people development uh, that I just want to go over quickly before we uh, head to the last point. All right. So um, some advice. Walk slowly through the walk slowly through the crowd. All right. Um, so uh, the, the idea here is that we we should have some way of keeping in touch with everyone uh, within the church. All right. Because we want to be developing people. So the reality is, is that we need more leaders. All right. I love every single one of you. You guys are awesome, but we cannot do everything that has to be done. We need more leaders. So the advice I'm giving myself and you is that we need to walk slowly through the crowd when we're at church, when we're hanging out with people. Um, walk slowly through the crowd. Keep your eyes open, all right? Um, learn the names of people. Um, stop and ask people, hey, you know, what are your gifts? What are your talents? You know, um, hey, have you ever thought about youth ministry? Walk slowly through the crowd and begin to care for people, all right? And I know some of you, you already do this, so it's no problem. Then we need to learn how to develop key leaders, all right? Key leaders. Develop key leaders. So um, those are just some kind of insights under this one people development. Uh, and so it's real important for us to uh, to understand that, uh, that uh, people development is, is what we're in the business for. So we've moved from one position. All right. You're the leader because everybody, because they said you're the leader. All right. So people respect you because that's your title leader. All right. So people, uh, well, actually they don't, they might not even respect you. Uh, people listen to you maybe because you're the leader. So Pastor Kevin comes in, he's the new guy. Some people are upset about the last guy, whatever, you know, he comes in. And so people now have to listen to him. Great. You know, it's like having a step parent come in the family. When my parents got, well, when my mom died, 
my dad eventually remarried, and uh, so my stepmom came along, and I had to listen to her because she was my stepmom. All right? I listened to her because of position. All right, so we moved from that to, to, to a place where we are giving permission for that person to lead. So eventually, um, I got over the fact that my stepmom, you know, was, you know, uh, just, she was this stranger, and, you know, why was she here? I had to listen to her, you know. Um, slowly, we began to, de to, to develop a relationship. I understood that she cared about me. Remember, we want to care for people. And so I moved to a place where I permitted her to influence my life, all right, permission. Then you move on to productivity, all right? We are having results take place, all right? So my mom loved me more, cared for me more. You are going to see results here in Blaze. You're going to move from a place where you um, are, are uh, allowing me to lead you because of the results that are coming um, out of our work collectively, all right? So um, position, uh, then uh, permission, productivity, people development. All right, so we, we move to a place where we are developing people, we're raising up other leaders, we're gaining more adult leaders, we're walking slowly through the crowd, we're developing key leaders, we're developing student leaders, they're developing leaders, all right? Then the last one is personhood. The last one is personhood, all right? This one um, is one that takes a life lifelong uh, to achieve, all right? Uh, personhood, the reality that um, uh, you, you've reached the apex of leadership where you are reproducing yourself and other people and you are amassing for yourself a huge crowd of people who love you, who respect you, uh, who, uh, they, I mean, you, you, you could lead them into hell, you know, I mean, and they would just storm the gates down with you. I mean, this one is the apex of leadership, and we're going to go a little more into it um, in just a minute, uh, but those are the five, all right? So I want to offer some reflections um, about those five, and then we're going to be done, okay? So remember a couple of these things, all right, as we're going along. One, the higher you go, the higher level of commitment, all right? So the higher you go as a leader, the more it's going to take out of your time, out of your life, out of your energy, all right? The higher you go, the easier it is to lead. When you begin to delegate, uh, when you are developing people, it becomes easier to lead. Doesn't mean that you're lazy, doesn't mean that whatever, but it, it, it becomes easier. And so when you delegate, you can accomplish more. We can do more as a team than I can do by myself. All right, the higher you go, the greater you grow. All right, so the higher you go, the higher we go as leaders, each of us, the greater we'll grow. And the last one is you never leave the base level. All right, so for example, if you're moving from level two to three, Remember, permission is productivity, you know, to, to productivity. If you're going from uh, the uh, permission level to productivity, but you forget that it's about people, then you're going to become results-driven only. And you're only going to care about the results, and you're going to kill your people, burn out your people. All right? Never, ever view a student as a person who just needs to be saved. Because then the objective becomes, well, we just want them to fill out salvation cards. All we care about is how many decisions we got. You know, we don't care about the person and developing them, all right? So um, what happened uh, like 20 years ago or so in the church was that they, they were so results-driven, people would go door to door, and they would have people, uh, they would convert people at their door, and they would get them to fill out this little form, and they'd take the form back to the church, and who knows what happened to the person who was just converted. Uh, you know, they wouldn't invite them to church, they wouldn't go, you know, the day after and, and you know, kind of help them, you know, they, well, I mean, they would just leave them high and dry, but they got their car filled out, all right, we don't want to be that way, okay, so we can never leave the base level, all right, now, I'm almost done talking, and all of you can give a hearty amen, all right, so uh, let me uh, just kind of help to summarize uh, each of these points of leadership, and then we'll be done, okay, so number one, position, you lead by position, you know your job description thoroughly, uh, you want to be aware of the history of the organization. You relate to the organization's history to the people of the organization. You accept responsibility. You do your job with consistent excellence. You do more than is expected, and you offer creative ideas for exchange and improvement. That's what you're doing at that first level of position. Level two, permission or relationship level. You possess a genuine love for people. You make those who work with you more successful. You see through other people's eyes. You love people more than procedures. You do win-win or you don't do it, all right? So we are out for a win, meaning uh, the things I want to do, uh, I want them to be a win-win. 
I win, you win. All right. I win, Blaze wins. You win, Blaze wins. All right. It's a win-win. Include others in your journey, and you deal wisely with people who are difficult. That's what you're doing at level two. All right. So if you do level one, you do level two. Uh, the idea is that you will just slide right to level three. Productivity. You initiate and accept responsibility for growth. You develop a statement of purpose. You make your job description and energy an integral part of the statement of purpose. You develop accountability for results that begin with yourself. All right, the reality is, is that whether or not Blaze grows or not is not your fault, it's my fault because I'm the leader. You know and do things that give a high return. You communicate the strategy and where you're going. Where, where is the organization going? Where are we going? You communicate that. You become a change a, a change agent and, and, and understand timing. You make the difficult decisions that will make the difference. All right, so uh, we are at the productivity level. Now level four, you realize that people are the most important part of what you do, all right? The asset, that they, they are the most important asset. You place a priority on developing people. Um, you reproduce yourself and other people. You be a person that others want to model. You pour your leadership efforts into the top 20% of your people. Remember Jesus, he had 12, but then he had three. The three who were very close that he took up on the Mount of Transfiguration, and then out of that three, he had one who was John the Beloved. So people were like, well, Jesus never played favorite, so I don't really know if that's true. He had the 12, but then he had his three, and then he had one who was called the Beloved. Only one was called the Beloved. Expose key leaders to growth opportunities. We're going to do that. Be able to attract other winners and producers to the common goal. Surround yourself with an inner core that complements your leadership. All right, so when you are a leader, you want to surround yourself with people who are going to complement your leadership. And the last one, personhood or respect. All right, this is a place where people genuinely respect you because you're a leader. You have, um, you have people who are working for you that um, they, they will give of themselves. They are committed. They're dedicated. They're loyal. They will sacrifice. You've spent years mentoring these people and shaping them into become leaders. You become a, a, a statesman or a consultant in the leadership world, and you're actually sought out by others. Your greatest joy comes from watching others grow and develop. And lastly, you transcend the organization. All right, so you are not um, held within it. You transcend it. All right, uh, so, for example, I want to get to a point where uh, I transcend Blaze, meaning that uh, that, that what I'm doing is I'm, I'm raising up leaders who are raising up other leaders. All right? I don't want you to follow me um, be, because uh, I'm super charismatic or, you know, I want you to follow me as I invest in the blaze. You know, Paul said to follow me as I follow Christ, but I don't want you to follow me and get attached to me where if I would get hit by a car tomorrow, you would quit blaze. All right. I don't think any of you would do that. All right, but there there are people who follow the leaders so close where when the leaders leave, they leave. All right, and that is not healthy. All right, that's not what we want to create. All right, I want to create people who will allow me to invest into their life, but they see the greater purpose, which is to reach kids, which is to grow blaze, and is to stay committed to blaze. All right, um, the person who drives the ship that will always change. All right, you, you will pick up a different captain somewhere along the way. All right, but we don't want uh, people to jump off board when the captain changes. All right, so thank you so much for taking time to listen to this. I pray that uh, these will help you and grow you and bless you. Uh, next time that we do this, all right, you'll see my smiling face, and we'll talk about priorities as a leader. Priorities. Thanks so much.